I made a big deal about how we're working hard to go to the populations that are toughest to reach, how important that is for their health, how important that is for public health. And uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Kurt Barwis. He runs uh, Bristol Hospital. Bristol has really taken the lead in terms of outreach to the greater community, especially a black and brown community. And he's got some pretty good uh, help and a, a, a great guy named Eric Clemens, who maybe you've seen as uh, the voice of sports here in the state of Connecticut, and uh, now um, also doing outreach on behalf and making sure the communities that didn't always feel confident and comfortable getting the vaccine are during, doing so. Over to you, Kurt. Unmute, sorry. Um, Governor, thank you so much um, for that introduction and, uh, and, and a personal thank you and for your leadership, your team, Department of Public Health. Uh, you have all been working endlessly around the clock since this, this thing started and, uh, and, I, and I just can't tell you how much I appreciate that. So, so we do have this um, really unique and special relationship with the local chapter, local branch of the NAACP. Um, it started some time ago, uh, Lexi Magnum was the, the local president. Uh, he uh, came onto our board of directors uh, almost six years ago and has really helped us develop this unique relationship where we do a lot of outreach. Um, we do local community um, sessions where uh, we bring healthcare providers to talk about their issues in the local churches and things like that. And just, uh, just back in December, early December, uh, Eric Clemens was, uh, was announced as the new incoming president of the local branch. And so Lexi uh, coordinated a meeting between uh, Eric, myself, and him. And we started to talk through some of the issues with reaching uh, this really vulnerable community and, and how we might do that. And what really shocked me was both Lexi almost exactly at the same time as Eric said, there's just so much fear. There's just so much concern about, is it safe? Is it okay? And, and you know, so, so, you know, how are we going to convince, um, you know, the members of our organization that it's, it's okay to do this? So we, we quickly started to talk about how we were going to do that. And we, we actually came up with the idea of doing a virtual uh, town hall meeting with uh, physicians and medical staff which uh, was, it was very well attended. There was uh, almost 100, pe 100 people that attended that. And, and the questions they asked were incredible. And, uh, and I, I'm gonna turn this over to, to Eric to, uh, to really take it from there. But again, thank you, Governor, and your team for just an incredible job leading this, this state through this, this pandemic. Eric. Thanks, Kurt. Over to you, Eric. Kurt. Okay, Governor Kurt, can you guys see and hear me loud and clear? We sure can. All right, Nice great. backdrop. <laughs> well, you would mention that, Governor. Well, I'm actually in California visiting my daughter and my first grandbaby, and uh, this is my daughter's little studio, so it's all glammed up in pink and stuff. It wouldn't be my first choice, but I have to take what I get when I'm visiting, right? Uh, uh, you know, Kurt talked about it, the partnership between Bristol Health and the NAACP. It ensures a trust between the community and organizations like Bristol Health and, of course, that community that they serve. Now, in terms of voting drives, we've collaborated on that just last fall. We had a voter registration event. More than 100 Bristol uh, residents registered to vote in that record-breaking, in terms of turnout, election that we just completed this past November. Uh, Kurt mentioned how myself and my colleagues uh, really heard all kinds of concerns, some of them based in rumor and misinformation, others based in some history about how African-Americans have been treated in the past by the medical community. And many were concerned about the COVID vaccine. So we scheduled a forum with experts who um, presented evidence on the benefits of the vaccine and really helped answer a bunch of questions, a flood of questions that came in, general questions that I had never thought of, but really did a great job in, I think, allaying a lot of fears. Uh, more than 100 people attended that uh, presentation, and many shared the link to that presentation. That link is right on the front of the Bristol Health website. Right now, you can find that link, and I, I recommend anybody check it out and look at it and get some answers to your own questions you may have. BristolHealth.org has that link. And again, every question you could pretty much think of was asked of those medical experts and uh, answered to the best of their ability. And it certainly 
I passed along some of the information to my family, and uh, it, it really did a world of good. Governor? Thank you very much. The Day of New London. Uh, hi, Governor. I was wondering what the you had mentioned the six sites uh, in addition to Rensselaer Field. Uh, do you have what those six sites are that one can schedule through the phone? Go yes. ahead, Josh. Uh, so uh, as of Monday, uh, we'll be scheduling at Bristol Hospital. So uh, thank you uh, to our colleagues on the line here. They've opened up some slots. Uh, we'll also have sites in Danbury, Kent, Middletown, Stamford, and then more coming on online uh, as well uh, that we should be able to announce next week. Uh, in other parts of the state. Um, and as the governor said as well, in addition, um, you know, pharmacies coming online now, which have been kind of targeted to some of the, the corners of the state, particularly the northeast uh, and northwest corners of the state, where we don't have as good coverage with other providers right now. So as the governor said, we're really working very strategically to, to make sure we've got great coverage uh, statewide. Thanks. And then um, you talked about some of the disparities in vaccination for vulnerable communities earlier. What do you see as, as the driving factors? I know it's there's been some discussion of um, just some mis mistrust in the medical community from some communities. But what, what do you see as driving those, though? Well, I'll start. Then maybe Kurt or Eric would, would want to jump in. But obviously the comorbidities in um, – uh, these uh, underserved populations, black and brown, much more likely to um, suffer complications. You know, reading some of the reports, um, uh, much more likely at the age of 65, if you're black, to suffer um, severe complications from COVID than a 75-year-old white person. So um, I think a lot of that is in terms of very congested living, and a lot of that is in terms of uh, the comorbidities. But uh, Kurt, you want to try that? I think I think you, Governor. I think you've got it exactly right, and 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 I think that that there is a lot of fear and concern about you know is this vaccine safe? And so I think the the right approach, the right tactic, is to read reach out to these individuals, reinforce that it's safe, um, have the conversation, and and I and listening to the to the conversation earlier about nursing homes and convincing the staff, and and that you know making that second pass through absolutely help people feel more comfortable about getting the vaccine is exactly what we have to do to keep reinforcing keep communicating um and and the other thing is too i, I and i feel very very strongly about this is you know connecticut we're a community where we we can recognize people that are in those high risk groups uh 75 and older and 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 really and you know really at risk and there are friends families people maybe that you see in the community I think it's, you know, it's like everything else, you know, stop, take a moment and, and ask them if they, you know, if, if there's something you can do to help them, because many, um, as you saw earlier in the slides, there's, there's always issues with uh, being able to use the internet at that age, you know, having, not having the experience, uh, maybe even not having emails and just saying, look, you know, there's, there's a helpline. Uh, can I help you make the call? Can I take you to the senior center or something like that? Um, so I, I think, you know, I think this is something we have to do as a community together and, and really work hard to, re to do the outreach. Uh, Eric, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, no, not much. I think, you know, I think you've hit everything that needs to be hit. I think uh, also the communication between those 75 plus year olds that have had the vaccine already can communicate with younger members in their own communities and their own families. They haven't spontaneously combusted. There's nothing, you know, going on, and they're they're moving along the process, and that helps allay those fears that may come from a lot of misinformation, as we we spoke about earlier. So I think it again it'll be an entire community and medical organizational uh, effort. Thank you all. The Hartford Current. Hey, everybody. This is Emily Brindley from The Current. Um, first question, I just wanted to follow up really quickly uh, on Allie's question about the 65 to 74-year-olds. Josh, did you say that 75-plus-year-olds will be done in two weeks or 65 to 74 will start in two weeks? Because my understanding is there's a little bit of an overlap between those two groups. That, that's correct. It's not binary. You, you flip the switch one day. You know, what we're, what we're doing is we're talking to Kurt and his peers around the state. We're monitoring the reservations and the appointments. And as soon as we start to see any slack um, 
and the demand start to, to taper off, then we'll start to phase in the 65 and above. So, you know, it, it's going to depend on the uptake. It's going to depend on can we get any more vaccines from the federal government. Um, so it's not an exact science. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, thanks, Emily, and um, thank everybody. Um, Kurt, I really appreciate everything you're doing at, at Bristol Health and, and, and bringing the vaccine to people and getting it done. And um, hey, Eric Clemens, I see you there on the Zoom screen. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, we're a little bit bipolar, as you've sort of heard from the questions. We've got an awful lot of people, probably the vast majority, who are desperate to be at the front of the line and get vaccinated first. And it, for them, it's life-giving and such a uh, bit of relief in this uh, great stress that we have. But you also know there's certain populations, we heard it in terms of the nurses at the nursing homes, we heard it in terms of corrections officers, some of the populations that you're dealing with who are hesitant about this. You've got the concluding word. What would you say to people, give them the inspiration to do the right thing? You know, in my lifetime and in people, I mean, when I was a child, mumps, measles, polio, whooping cough, all those things were very common. And vaccinations helped almost eliminate occurrences of those particular uh, diseases uh, that I saw a lot of when I was a child. I think by and large, the scientific and medical community in a, in a pandemic that we haven't seen in our lifetimes in over a hundred years has worked very hard to, to try feverishly to come up with this. And I think that as we see more people be vaccinated and not suffer some strange illness or death or go about life as normal, I think that will go a long way in, in calming some of these fears that people have of what is the unknown. And there have been a lot of people vaccinated so far, and now hopefully they'll spread the knowledge, yes, I've been vaccinated, and yes, I'm still here, and yes, I feel a lot better. And I think we'll see a lot of that fear go away, like we talked about earlier with the nursing homes and everything. And I know personally the outgoing president of the NAACP here in Bristol was vaccinated and cut my hair just a few weeks ago, and he looks fine. He, he seems fine. So, uh, you know, that's, that's one person I know personally that uh, has been vaccinated and gotten his second shot, and he's doing well. And, you know, and I, I just want to believe that science, the medical community, our government, our community servants and people have our best interests at heart and that they would never put a vast majority of the population in harm's way just for some whim. I think, uh, I think we can be confident that we're working towards the, the, the right kind of solution to this problem that we haven't seen in our lifetime. One of the tricks in life is know how to delegate to really good people. Eric, thank you for saying that so well and appreciate all your help. Be safe, everybody.